Hey everyone, it's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel and to the 5,000 YouTuber subscriber video hop for my friends Ardith, Jenny, and Katya. There's lots of prizes to be won and lots of sponsors on the hop. You can find all of that information as well as the link to the next video in the description below. I'm going to go ahead and get started on my technique, which is going to be creating this really beautiful blended flower with no coloring at all. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm using the Mondo Chrysanthemum Stamp and Die Set from Ellen Hudson, and I'm going to be grabbing some alt new inks, and that's actually how I'm going to be coloring in my images today. I originally land on Fresh Lemon, Frosty Pink, and Coral Berry, though those do change in a little bit, but I'll get into that then. And for my blending brushes, I'm going to be using these ones from the Stamp Market. They come in three different sizes, and I'll also go into sizing in a little bit as well. So you can see that all of my images fit on this standard A2 size piece of cardstock. This is Bristol Smooth cardstock, and I love using this for ink blending. It has a thin like vellum layer over the entire surface, and it's just really, really nice and smooth, and it's great for ink blending. To stamp these, I'm using my Jet Black ink from Altenew, and I just want a nice, bold image. A lot of times with ink blending, you'll see people heat embossing, but I really wanted this almost to look like I colored it in using markers or some other type of medium rather than just ink. I wanted it to sort of be like a mind trick, so I wanted to make sure that I was able to achieve that by stamping these images in black ink as I would if I were to color them in. Now I'm going to leave the stamps exactly where they are in the misty. I'm not going to touch them because we're going to come back to that in just a minute as well. Now since I'm ink blending on top of these stamped images, I'm going to hit it with my heat gun just to make sure that all of this ink is nice and dry and I don't have any smudging. I'm starting in the center of the chrysanthemum and I'm going to move out to the edges. So I'm starting with fresh lemon in the very center. I'm just using the tip of this brush. Now this is a medium sized brush from the stamp market. Lots of different companies will have lots of different sizes. And the great thing about having a plethora of sizes is that you're able to kind of manipulate where the colors go with smaller brushes, but if you need a much larger space to be ink blended, a larger brush is going to do a much better job at making a seamless blend. So it's important to really try out different sizes and see what works for you. And I'm actually going to go into that a little bit more in just a second. Here's the start of this problem that I had. So I've got this really light frosty pink color, which is beautiful, but it's not showing up the way that I want it to. So I go ahead and switch gears and I think, okay, let me grab Pink Diamond and Puffy Heart instead of the two uh, Frosty Pink and Coral Berry. Now I'm still having trouble getting the color payoff that I want with Frosty Pink. Now these are extremely light colors and they take a, quite a bit to build on top of one another, but I'm finding it really difficult with this size brush to complete a look that I would like. So I go ahead and grab my smaller size brush and this is just denser. It's smaller, it's more dense. I'm able to pick up a little bit more ink on this and it's making this show through much better. So I'm going to stick with these colors since these are the ones that uh, sort of came to be and I'm using pink diamond here. And then um, I go into this darker color, which I'm actually using right now, and that's Puffy Heart. Now I'm going to complete the flower with Puffy Heart, and I am going to come back in in just a second with a darker color called Rubelite. I do that just because I realize that the blend isn't as much as I really wanted. I wanted it to go from yellow to a very light pink and then go out to a really dark pink color, something that made a big impact. And I just thought that if I brought in a bit of a darker color just for the edges, that would work out better. So you can see that I went back in with that yellow just to make it a little brighter there in the center. And now I'm doing exactly what I just explained. I'm going in with that darker Rubelite color, and this is a very intense color. So I'm really just picking up a tiny bit on the tip of this brush. Now, like I said, this is their smallest brush option. So depending on what you're trying to do or the look that you're trying to go for, having different sizes can be really important. 
For the leaves, I'm going to do a very similar thing and I'm just going to take the Two Colors Forest Glades that I'm using right here and I'm going to blend that in, over the entire leaf image and then I'm going to go in with evergreen in just a moment and do the very edges of these leaves and again this just will give a little bit more of a blend look and I'm just going to take that evergreen and go right over the very edges of these leaves and now that I'm finishing up you're looking at this and saying this is a hot mess and this is going to look terrible but I promise you once it all comes together you'll see that it really does turn out really beautifully so because I left those stamps in the Misty, I'm able to place this cardstock back in the Misty. Because I've been ink blending over and over, I dulled the lines a little bit. So I want to make sure that I can re-stamp these images in jet black ink like I had originally over the images that I've already ink blended. This is just going to make those lines pop and it's going to be in the same exact spot that it was before because I used my Misty. Now, try not to judge too much. I actually was off like a millimeter, just a tiny, tiny bit. And I think it was because I didn't make sure that my mouse pad was in the corner there. But it's not that bad, so I went ahead and used it. And I hope that you'll forgive me, but uh, moving right along. So now that I have my... Uh, card front and this card front is cut to four by five and a quarter so this is just a quarter inch smaller than an a2 size card and i do this just so i can get a nice border around my card front i just think it looks really nice it kind of looks a little bit more framed so what i've done is just taken my images and before i adhered anything i just went ahead and created a very simple card layout with these images now I've decided that I want my main flower on the bottom right hand side and I want this leaf just underneath it. So I've adhered those two together with liquid glue and then I'm going to go ahead and put some foam tape on the back. This will help the card just have a little bit more dimension. I think it just brings a little bit more interest to the card when you can pop up some of these images and just make them look a little bit more lifelike in that sense. So I've gone ahead and done that on the bottom right hand side. Obviously I have quite a bit hanging off so I'm just going to take my scissors and trim all of that off. Now I never ever throw my trimmed pieces in the trash until I'm sure that I don't want them and I'll show you why in just a second. So I've done the same thing with that leaf in the top right hand corner and again I just have some hanging off so I'm going to go ahead and snip any hang off or any part of that leaf that's hanging off from my card front. So I went ahead and played with it a little bit off camera. It just wasn't coming together exactly how I wanted it. But then I have this piece of chrysanthemum that I trimmed off of the edge. And this is a good size piece. So I went ahead and added this to the bottom left, I'm sorry, the top left hand side of my card front, trimmed off the excess. And now I have a completely different flower and it looks like a new scene. And I just love the way that this all comes together once I add a little bit of a leftover leaf in there. And I really was able to create this entire scene with just three images and it worked out really great. I also love the fact that you can really see the blended out color from that yellow to the light pink to the medium to the dark pink. And I didn't have to pick up a marker or a colored pencil and it took me, I don't know, maybe a total of 10 or 15 minutes to create this card from front to end. And I just really, I'm really excited about the way that it turned out. I hope that you've enjoyed the video. I hope that you'll leave a comment and enter yourself in for the giveaway. Be sure to congratulate Ardith, Katya, and Jenny on their accomplishment. And as always, you can find all of the product links in the description. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Bye.